Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on assembling what I'm going to call the Cheap Yellow Marauder. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to assemble this from all the components here. Basically, if you look at the Marauder Mini with the built-in GPS radio, this thing's retailing for $92. That's without the 502-530 battery. That's going to run you another 8 bucks on Amazon, so you're going to be into this thing 100 bucks plus shipping. I managed to assemble the Cheap Yellow Marauder, sourcing all the parts completely off of Amazon for about 50 bucks. And if you buy all that same hardware direct from China, you can get it for even cheaper than that. So the battery in the Marauder Mini has a 400 milliamp hour capacity. I slammed a 3000 milliamp hour battery into this case that gives it more than seven times the battery capacity. Now because this thing has a touchscreen interface, when you launch the functions like war driving or BLE spamming or packet sniffing, you're going to touch the screen to exit and that makes it hard to put it in your pocket. So when I designed the case, I also built a cover for it that just pressure mounts right onto the mounting screws and so you can kick off your functions and then you won't be able to tap the screen. You can throw this in your pocket, you can throw it in a backpack. You don't have to worry about scratching the screen or puncturing it or anything like that. I also built a sheath into the case to hold the stylus that it comes with so that you can look cool while you're navigating the touchscreen menus on your cheap yellow Marauder. So functionally, these two are at parity. Underneath the hood, the hardware is basically the same. They run the exact same firmware, they do the exact same thing. But again, this costs about half as much to build and boasts 7x the battery capacity. So let's jump into the bill of materials. All right, so the heart of the operation is this board here. This is what Witness Me Now on GitHub is calling the CYD or cheap yellow display. Um, that's because the actual name for it is just a bunch of numbers. Uh, but basically, this is an ESP32 board with a micro SD reader built in. It's got an LED, it's got a port for GPS. Uh, it's got micro USB and USB C. And it's important to note that there are two different variations. They look extremely similar, but the difference is that on the base here, one of them has a USB-C, one does not. The footprint is slightly different. Um, I built mine around the one with USB-C, so the case that I've made won't fit this board. And the other motivation for that is that they both come with a stylus. The stylus that comes without the USB-C is much bigger, and so it was a whole lot harder to make a case that I would have to compromise the integrity of to fit the larger stylus. So I went with the one with the white stylus. Again, that's the board that has USB-C. So in addition to our CYD board here, I'm gonna be using this 3000 milliamp hour battery. This is a 974058. Along with that, I'm gonna be using a USB-C one amp charging circuit. We're gonna use the ATGM336H GPS module, um, and that comes with the little ceramic antenna. Uh, this plug came with the CYD, and this is what we're gonna to use to wire in the GPS. And then we've got some M3 by six millimeter screws, four of those, and we've got some three millimeter inserts. And then we have a slide switch to do the power, as well as the 3D printed top and bottom pieces. All right, so we'll begin the build by burning the M3 inserts into the four corners. I have a dedicated soldering iron that I use for this, just a cheapo one so that I don't mess up the tip on my nice soldering iron. So let's get these burned in. Now we're going to start preparing our battery circuit. So I'm going to take the charging circuit. I'm not going to push it into there because the tension mounts in. I just want it placed where it's going to be. I'll do the same thing with the battery. Now I'll fold the battery wires over and cut them to length of where they're going to solder onto the charging circuit. Okay, and remember now we're dealing with live voltage. So the next step is going to be to shave the tips back. We'll drive them through the top of the charging circuit and solder them on from the bottom. And we're going to drive red into the B plus square and black into the B minus square. Now that we've got our battery all wired into the power circuit, nice and soldered on there, the next step is going to be to start to prepare the power switch. So we're going to cut one of the ends off, doesn't matter which one. And so now this position on the slide switch will be off. And when we move it to this side, it's going to create continuity between the two pins and allow current to pass through, so that'll be on. So I'm going to turn the switch to off just to make sure we don't accidentally connect anything too early. And next, I'm going to use some 26 gauge stranded copper wire that's red. I'm going to shave it back and solder it to the pin on the end. All right, so with our switch and our power circuit lined up about where they're going to go, I'm just going to measure how long this is going to need to be to get to that pad there, and I'll cut that wire. 
Now that this wire is exposed, we can stick a little bit of heat shrink on here. And I'll go ahead and heat shrink this up with the lighter so that uh, we don't get any unwanted connections. All right, now that we've got our circuit all ready to go, I'm gonna strip this back a little bit and tin it, and then we will drive it through the top of the charging circuit here on this out plus and solder it from the bottom. So with our switch now soldered onto our power circuit, I'm gonna use again the stranded 26 gauge red copper wire, and I'm gonna solder another wire onto the remaining pin. Next, I'm gonna use some 26 gauge black stranded copper wire, and I'm gonna build a lead coming off the out minus on the control board. Okay, so with everything placed back about where it's gonna live, our next step is gonna to be to solder the two power wires onto the CYD. And we're gonna solder negative onto the S1 pad here and positive onto the S3 pad there. And because they're gonna be soldered, I want enough slack to be able to set the board next to it so I can take it off and open it up if I need to. So I'm gonna set it here and then I'm gonna cut these two wires to length to those pads. And now that we have our positive wire cut to length, I'll stick a piece of heat shrink on here and heat shrink the other side of the switch that we just soldered up. Then I'll strip back the tips, tin them, I'll tin the two solder pads and solder the wires on. All right, so at this point with the power circuit all completed, we should be able to flip the switch here and the CYD turns on. So we can turn that back off, plug in our USB-C power source here, and we'll see that the red light on the charging circuit lights up. Um, I had to try three different USB-C cables and two different power sources, so this thing's a little bit finicky. If it doesn't work on the first one, try a different cable, try a different power source, but eventually I got it to turn on and charge. Okay, so with the power circuit all worked out, the last thing to install is the GPS radio. This is the ATGM 336H. Basically, we're going to install it like this into this square here with the IPEX connector facing up and the solder points facing the top of the case. So in order to install that, we're gonna use the plug that this came with. This is keyed so it only plugs in one way. The red's gonna be on the left. It's gonna plug in down here. And basically now we're gonna measure these cables going from here. I'm gonna fold them back over. I'm gonna pull them all the way to where they need to go. And I'll cut all four of them there. Now to solder them in, the color pattern is gonna be red, black, yellow, blue, and we're not gonna use the pin all the way on the right. And if you want, you can line these up VCC ground, TXRX, with the pinouts that are actually listed on the board. So I'll run them in from this side and solder them on here so we can drop that chip into that corner slot there. So now that we have everything wired up, we can begin assembling our case. So I'm gonna start with the GPS antenna and I'm gonna have the wire coming out to the right side. So we'll feed it in through the top here and I'll just pressure mount it into place. Now we've got a nice snug flush mount there. So next we'll install the battery and we'll put in the power circuit. And now we'll put in the power switch. And I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to gently push it into place. And it pops into place and does a nice little flush mount here. Now we'll install the GPS radio. And I'm gonna coil the antenna wire and plug it into the IPEX connector and we'll plug it into the CYD. Now I'm gonna plug the micro USB into the computer and we'll get the firmware flashed before we close everything up and bolt it together. Okay, so here on Frank Fletcher's GitHub, there is a repo called ESP32 Marauder Cheap Yellow Display. And if we scroll down here, he's got the CYM web flasher built out for us. So with the CYD plugged in micro USB to the computer here, I'm gonna hold down the boot button, press the reset button and release it, and then release the boot button. And the screen will stay dark, but I'll be able to hit connect and pick my USB serial port and hit connect. And now from our drop down here, I'm gonna select the CYD2 USB and we have GPS, so we're gonna pick this one and then we're going to hit program. All right, now with flashing complete, let's jump back over to the bench. All right, now with our firmware flash, the last thing to do is to button this thing up. So we'll flip it over and push all the wires into place. Now we'll drive our four screws into the four corners. All right, now we'll try turning it on. 
and we can see we've got the Marauder firmware on here so the last thing to do is to drop our stylus in and slap our top case on and there we go we're all up and running so hopefully at this point you guys have a cheap yellow Marauder and you can drop an SD card in and get out there and start war driving so as always stay tuned and thanks for watching